Hey, what's up y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So the first thing is when this comes out, it'll be Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there and happy Mother's Day to you moms who are also lawn care nuts. I have seen more and more and more of you getting out into the lawn and it's super inspiring and I'm really glad that you're here and I'm really glad that you're also showing up some of these dudes on how to dominate their neighbors. Now normally I shoot my videos on Saturdays and or Sundays and edit on Sundays and then publish on Sundays. But because it's Mother's Day weekend, I actually wanna take my wife out and have a little fun with her and do all that kind of stuff. So I'm actually shooting this on a Friday morning to get everything ready. And it's actually kind of nice and cool out today, which is a nice welcome reprieve from the 90s that we've had lately here in Florida. But my main goal today is to talk to you about three ways that you can actually start preparing for summer. Now I know it's only the mid spring right now. I think the first day of summer is like June 20th. So we're quite a few ways away from that, but it's never too early to start preparing. Now that you're, you got your mowing going well, you're mowing every couple, two, three days. Like I talk about, you got your fertilizing down. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link up there in the eye to uh, a video I did last week that talks about what to look for in a fertilizer. But now it's time to start making some extra tweaks to prepare for the heat of summer that is coming for all of us. It's never too early to get prepared for when that heat wave comes because depending on your grass type, it's gonna react differently. It's gonna like it a little bit differently, but it still needs the same support structure to take care of itself. And to give you a little bit more detail on what I'm talking about, let's look at our lawn growth curves or our grass type growth curves, and let's base it on the type of grass we have. So you see here on the top, this is cool season grass, and on the bottom, this is warm season grass. Cool season grasses, you do most of your growth or they do most of their growth in the spring and the fall. In the summer, they kind of chill, and obviously in winter, they chill. Whereas warm season turf, we have this long ramp and when we get to summer, that's when we're raging. That is the time when our grasses really like to run. So let's talk about cool season grass first. So your grass is gonna chill out when it gets to the summer. And what that means is, you know, you're gonna get days, depending where you live, that are up over 90 degrees and your turf type tall fescue, but especially your Kentucky bluegrass and perennial rye, they don't do real well over 90. And you start getting 92, three and four, and you have those type, type, type of temps, for several days in a row. And those grasses wanna check out. They wanna go into what's called summer dormancy because it's just at the upper limits of what they can tolerate. So they just literally check out as a defense mechanism. Whereas warm season turf, your turf really likes the heat. The more the better, bring it on because it's gonna really rage and it's gonna grow optimally with all that heat as well as the longer days that the warm, that the warm season grasses require in order to get optimum growth push. The thing about it is in either case, the grass that's struggling in the summer with cool season or the grass that's raging in summer with warm season, you need to support those grasses in whatever state of flux that they're in. And today I'm gonna to talk about that. I'm gonna show you exactly how to set up a good support structure for them. And we need to start that now because a good offense is often started with a good defense. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start working on a good base so that when we do get to summer, we're all set up and our grass can make it through the best way possible. Look at those roots, John Perry. So the idea is you wanna get more roots and you wanna get those roots deeper. The more roots you get, the thicker those roots, the deeper those roots, the more dense those roots, the more root mass that you have, the more moisture that your grass can get or pull up, because that's how it works, right? The roots are pulling moisture and nutrients up through the plant here. Sunlight is hitting the plant here, sending sugars down. That's the whole process, right? So the more roots you have and the deeper they are, the more moisture they can grab. The other thing is the deeper they are, it's cooler down below. So what we wanna do first and foremost, right now in the spring while the getting's good, is drive roots. So in an effort to drive roots now in the, so in an effort to drive roots now in the spring, so we have root mass structure, deeper roots in the summer when it's really gonna matter and when it's really gonna count, what products can we use to drive those roots? This is the primary one that everybody knows about that we talk about, RGS stands for Root Growth Stimulant. And you will see that the big player here is the sea kelp, 3% sea kelp. 3% of everything that's inside of here is sea kelp. Let me let John Perry explain to you what sea kelp does. So kelp alone is not a fertilizer. It's more of a soil conditioner, but it has these particular properties that will do some pretty cool things to plants. Now there are a few different plant hormones that are contained inside of kelp, especially in these concentrated versions. And what you're looking at are a few different growth regulators, auxins, 
gibberellins and cytokinins. There's a natural occurring auxin that is in these particular sea kelp plants that helps to boost growth, enhance cell division, enhance nutrient uptake, do all of these really cool things. And also, kind of as a sideline to that, the amount of amino acids that you find inside of the kelp plant are also quite huge. We're basically just taking a plant and then we are using the greatest benefits of that plant and getting it down into the soil and into the plant. So what you could do is you could start hammering the RGS every 10 to 14 days, just three ounces per thousand is all you need, get it watered in. The nice thing about RGS is not only does it have that sea kelp to drive those roots, it also contains humic acid, which is a carbon source and that's why my soil is so beautiful and black. Another option we have is one I haven't really talked too much about, we just released this one this year. If you already have the biostimulant pack, you do not need this. This is a little extra. I got this because some folks had asked for a product like this. I know sometimes people think I'm pitching products all the time, but listen, if I don't tell people what I'm using, I get just as many negative comments. But the other thing is I listen to the customers. And so when I roll new things out, it isn't because I think you need to buy something because listen, if you have already the biostimulant pack, do not buy spoon juice, okay? So that's not a sales pitch, is it? Don't buy it. Some folks don't want four full products to throw down. It gets a little little bit confusing to them and I understand that it seems like oh man what do I do when and you know so that gets confusing so we came out with a one-stop shop here this is a single application that you can make now it doesn't completely replace the biostimulant pack it's impossible to get all of that into one jug but this is a, as close as I could get it has a little bit of nitrogen the reason we have that is because it'll stimulate the uptake of the iron that's in here it also does have 10% humic acid and 2% sea kelp uh, as well as a tiny bit of potash. So this, and some sulfur, very important. So this has a lot of the stuff that you would be getting here in a much simpler form. So that's what spoon juice is. It's also for those of you that like to throw down every week. We have some people in the community that wanna throw something down or spray something every week. If that's you, then spoon juice works. Three ounces per thousand every single week you can do that. I'm one of those guys I always wanna be putting something down. So it's also for you. But for the most part, if you're somebody that already has the biostimulant pack, do not buy this. Okay, and then onto what I'm gonna be using today. I'm actually gonna be using this, this is CK. This is the highest concentrated form of sea kelp that we can get, and it is 50%. So 50% of this has the Ascophulum nodusum, which is the cold water sea kelp highly concentrated. Now that's a two and a half gallon. We don't sell them that big for you guys. The reason I have a two and a half gallon is because I apply this at the Freedom Factory. But for you guys, we just sell a quart. And the reason is, is because it's very highly concentrated. One quart will cover an acre. It's a one half ounce per thousand use rate. That's it, one half ounce for every thousand square feet. I'm gonna actually apply it today and show you, but that's all you need. And this will drive roots for sure. So again, another option. If you already have RGS or spoon juice, you don't need this but it's just another option. A lot of people like options. They like to add things in. They like to play, they like to pull the different levers. So I just wanna let you know, this is also available to you. And because it's available, I'm gonna go ahead and show you that I'm gonna be applying it today. One other thing I wanted to stress real quick, this doesn't have any humic in it. This is just straight up sea kelp for roots. So that's why it can be a little bit of an extra. But again, if you already have one of these, you don't need it. Please understand that. This is on sale now, again, in quartz for 10% off. First time we've ever put it on sale. 10% off, I'll give you links below. Now the second thing that you're gonna wanna do though, while you're gonna walk the lawn and spray, is apply your hydrotain. Now I've been talking about this for a couple years. This is an awesome product, it's very unique. There really isn't anything like it else on the market. Hydrotain is, hydrotain they call it a moisture manager. Essentially what it does is it makes your watering go further or any little bit of rain that you get, it makes it go further and it does that by when it gets down into the roots, and that's the key, that's why we're applying it together here, is it gets down where the roots are and it attaches itself right next to the roots and it literally will pull moisture from the air down towards the roots of the grass. So it just kind of brings it down in there. It's hard for me to show you before and after how it works in a lawn because a lawn is just so expansive, but I can show it to you using potted plants and I've done that for a couple times now. So let me show you how hydrotain works on potted plants. Okay, so here we are back now. It's actually about 36 hours later and now we're able to see the hydrotain kicking in while the other one that didn't get treated that only got the water is suffering. So here you go. Now I need to get some water on this guy because <laughs> I don't want him to, to get any permanent damage, but you can see the leaves are all cupped and, and curled and not doing well, it's it's all sagging. And now here over here is the one that got the hydrotain. Look at it, flowers are bright, standing up. Look at that, no sag at all. Doing much better, wow. 
just beautiful. And that's because that hydrotain is sucking moisture out of the air, even in a pot. The moisture is being sucked out of the air, brought down right next to the roots, and it's keeping it hydrated properly. So you can imagine how it's gonna work in the lawn the same way. Now, one application of this is gonna last you 60 to 90 days, so you might need a couple applications through the summer. And I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to do this. But we also have the Hydrotain liquids on sale right now for 10% off. Okay, now one thing I want to mention with Hydrotain, it has to be watered in immediately. When I say immediately, I mean immediately. You do not want the Hydrotain to dry on the grass blades because it will not get to the root system. It's got to get to the roots. So you got to water it in immediately. When you use a pump sprayer, you have a lower volume of water going down. So what I do when I apply it with a pump sprayer is I actually wet the lawn really well first and that'll help it to get down deeper. You still water it right after the app, but I water the lawn first, just get it wet on top. We're only doing 2,000 square feet at a time, so it's not so much of a pain to do this. By the way, let me take this second to dispel a myth. This is Florida. It's gonna get up to 85, possibly 90 degrees today. And here we are, almost the middle of the day, and I'm watering. People have heard this myth that you shouldn't water your lawn during the middle of the day because it can burn your lawn. What they think is that the sun rays will reflect through the water droplets and act like a prism and burn your lawn. That is an absolute fallacy because of the fact that here in Florida in the summer, it's well over 90 degrees every day. We get rain every afternoon at about two o'clock and you never hear on the news about mass lawn burnings, do you? That's a myth. Watering your lawn in the middle of the day is probably not the smartest thing because the water just evaporates and is wasted, but it definitely does not burn your lawn. That is a huge myth. Anyway, you can see I got it good and soaked down now, and that's the idea. That way when I spray, everything is gonna slide right down into that soil. So I have my irrigation running, but the one thing about automatic irrigation is it only does zones. So the way the zones are set up, it doesn't cover this area, right? So I hand water the top part and let the irrigation take care of the bottom part. Whatever you have to do. I mean, to me, I find this kind of relaxing, actually. I think a lot of you do, too. You just sit there and spray your lawn with clear, cool water. Okay, now this area here is also 2,000 square feet, and I'm gonna show you another way to do it with our good old friend, the Orthodialin Spray. Now, I know a lot of you guys don't like this, but there are a bunch of you that have good luck with this, and I can tell you that the products that we're gonna use here, both will flow very easily through this. One of them is very precision, the CK, so it's not necessarily recommended to use this, but if you're somebody that's good with it, you're comfortable with this equipment, you can use the CK through this. You just wanna make sure you don't waste it. And of course, the Hydrotain will work great through a hose-in sprayer. There's actually a hose-in sprayer option with the Hydrotain, which I've actually saved mine, so I can just use it over and over again. But because I'm gonna do a mix here, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Ortho here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same mix. I'm gonna use one ounce of the CK, because that'll cover 2,000 square feet, and 18 ounces of the Hydrotain. Then I'm gonna fill the rest of this tank up with water and spray and pray.
By the way, one thing I wanted to say with this, you don't have to pre-wet the lawn because this does put down a higher volume of water, but you can if you want to. Uh, the thing about these is you can always switch them when you're done to the off position like that, and now it's gonna spray water only. So I can go back and effectively water in what I just did. But again, with the higher volume, so I'll switch this back now. But again, with the higher volume of water that goes down, there's not as much need to pre-wet or anything like that. But again, you still do want to water it in right away. You want it to work. I don't know if you'll be able to see this on the camera, but one of the ways you know this is spraying is the hydrotain will blow bubbles. See the little bubbles? I don't know. If, I don't think you're gonna be able to see them, but when you're spraying, you definitely can tell because there's no color change with this. So you can also smell it. It doesn't smell bad. It almost has like a plasticky smell to it but it's really the bubbles being blown. That's how you know that it's coming out good. And of course you can feel the tank getting more empty as you go. Okay, so now while I water this in, let me talk about really the most important thing that you're gonna need to get ready for the summer. These two products I've just talked to you about are prep and they're gonna get you along the way, but there's one really important thing you need to do and that is develop a watering plan. Okay, so it's Saturday the next day and man, these mornings have been beautiful here. So the next thing I wanna talk about though is a watering plan. You see, there's gonna be a point where you're gonna to need to start watering. And from some of you guys like in Michigan and then also in Utah and probably surrounding states, a lot of you are really dry now, even in the spring, and you probably need to start watering right now, even if your grass still looks good. If on the news they're saying we're in a drought or we're down water, if you're seeing these types of things in your newscasts, it's probably a good sign that you wanna start watering now and get ahead, almost like building up a bank. But either way, there's gonna be a point where you're gonna to need to start watering. And I'm gonna talk about that first. How do you know when you need to start watering? And I can do that by showing you some of the signs in a lawn over by where my office is. So I don't think you'll be able to see it as much from over here, but when you turn this way, can you see these areas that are this gray color right in here? Now this is a slope, so it's gonna show up here before it does really anywhere else, but it's still the same look. See how you have some areas that are more gray, that's telling you these areas are checking out from not enough water. And so this is your key. And it, the reason it checks out in some places and not others, it could be the way the water drains. You know, for example, this little green spot right here looks like a low spot to me. Yeah, it is. So any water or dew or whatever in the morning, it drains into that area so that area stays wetter. There may, may also be deeper roots there. But these areas here could be that the trees are robbing some of the water, who knows? But it doesn't so much matter why certain areas are the way they are, except for that's where you may wanna check your irrigation and make sure it's covering properly. But here, because this is kinda of consistently like this all the way down, this tells me that this whole thing, they just need to up the irrigation cycle. Maybe they need to water longer when they do, or maybe they need to add a day to the cycle, whatever it is. But that's what you're looking for, these areas that kinda of check out into this gray area, this gray look like this. Now, other times the signs will be more obvious, such as over at my project lawn where they actually had to turn the water off for a little bit. Look at what happened there. Hey, okay, so today is Cinco de Mayo and I stopped at my project lawn. I was actually gonna cut it today and uh, found out, well, let me just tell you the horror. Let me just show you the horror <laughs> that I, I, I came into here. There you go. And I can show you pictures of what this looked like just a, not even a week ago, like five days ago. So this is lack of water is exactly what this is. Now it is in the nineties today and uh, they haven't been watering, not on purpose actually. So the irrigation here is fed from ponds and they had to do something with the lilies in the ponds. They had to spray something to kill the lilies. I don't know what it is, but whatever they did, 
to do that, that means they can't irrigate for like a week. They have to shut the irrigation off because they don't want whatever they sprayed on the lilies, you know, obviously going all around here. So the water here has been shut off for the last five days. We have two more days to go and uh, we got no rain in the forecast. <laughs> Even though it looks like it should, uh, we're a little bit dry. I know a lot of you guys around the country are dry. We're dry here too. Uh, we'll be entering our rainy season in about a month, but normally we have some rain leading up to that and we haven't had that at least in this part of the country here or this part of Florida. So anyway, this just shows you when you start seeing these areas like this, uh, whether you do it on purpose or not, this means you need some water. Now, I don't have really any way to water here, um, so we're going to have to just tough it out and hope for the best. One thing I, you will see, though, and this is just something that maybe would be uh, useful to some of you guys, the areas that have checked out the worst, you can see in the middle here, it's checking out in some areas, some areas it's not. Just means that the roots are probably a little better in a little better shape in some of those areas. Some of them might be low spots where whatever dew is here does kind of run into them, whatever reason. But you look over here, these areas checked out the worst and that is because that's where all the foot traffic is. So that is, you know, obviously people coming out of church or whatever, standing there, hanging out, doing whatever, taking selfies. So this here is where there's much more foot traffic. The soil is much more compacted there. The grass gets stomped on, so it's just weaker. And so it checked out first when there was, or checked out the worst or the furthest when it was without enough irrigation. All right, so I want to keep this timeline straight for you. So what you saw there happened on May the 5th and the irrigation had been off for five days. On May the 6th, one of my buddies, Greg, who works on grounds over at the church, texted me this. Looked like they had a little bit of an event there for the kids on the struggling grass. So on May the 7th, the last day where we had no water, I went over and took this survey. Okay, so I'm back, it's Friday now. And uh, I wanted to take another look at the project lawn here because so they had some sort of kids thing out here and uh so not only was the lawn not watered it also got trampled so it doesn't look so great <laughs> in fact pretty much all of it has checked out now If you're hearing the boom, boom, booming, that's because they're practicing for services in there. But the only section that's holding out is right there. Other than that, it is all checking into dormancy horribly. So there you go. That's, uh, you know, they got to have church here, though. That's just how it works. So it'll be my fun to bring this back. It's mostly just going to take water. It'll come back fairly quickly, actually, after the water comes in. Of course, we have opportunistic weeds now that are able to get in. So I have to do a little spot spraying, but not while the ground is stressed. That is for sure. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and you will see me bring this back with mostly just water though. And uh, be looking good another couple, two or three weeks. Be looking good another couple, two or three weeks. Okay, so I'm over here at the church. It's Saturday morning and tomorrow's Mother's Day. So the water's back on now. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it for a good hour or so. And uh, that should put down about three quarters of an inch according to my last time I did a tuna can challenge here. I am really hoping to get the lawn back green for Mother's Day because a lot of people like to take pictures on this grass for Mother's Day. It's not gonna have a fresh cut. It's not gonna have any stripes. I can't do that um, because it's too stressed to mow it. But at least I can hopefully get it a little bit green so I'm not gonna film too much when I go out there there's actually a memorial service going on at the church here so I don't want to be out there vlogging when all that's going on but I'll, I'll just get a get this turned on real quick get a couple shots of the irrigation running and then I'll be here tomorrow morning for church with my family and hopefully get a couple shots and hopefully it will look greener and show you just how fast the lawn can come back when it was healthy you let it go for a little bit and then you get the water back on it so there you go Well, it's trying to come back, but you can see that wherever something was done, something was driven here. Maybe something that was moving that big slip and slide, but caused some damage. That's what can happen when you walk on uh, dormant struggling grass. Still recovering a little bit in some spots. But overall, coming back already just from one day of watering. So. It shows you how strong 
grass really is. And guess what I've been treating it with? So to set up a watering plan, what you need to do is understand how much water your sprinklers are putting down. The biggest thing that I see, or I guess the biggest mistake I see, or whatever you want to call it is, like on Facebook, people will say, people will show us a picture of their lawn and it definitely needs water. They're like, I don't understand, I'm watering a half an hour every other day, or I leave my sprinkler out for a half hour twice a week. We'll see. I don't know what that really means. I don't know the water pressure from your house. I don't know the coverage of your sprinkler. Is your sprinkler out a half hour covering this much? Or is it out a half hour covering that much? You see, none of that matters. Time doesn't mean anything. What matters is making a watering plan specific to your house. And I'm gonna link videos below, two of them, on how to take the tuna can challenge, which literally shows you how to go step by step and measure out how much water is being put down in each area that you either put your sprinkler manually, or if you have automatic sprinklers like me, you have to know how much water is put down when a zone runs for a certain amount of time. So make sure you view those two videos. I'll link one of them up there and I'll link them both below on how to set up a watering plan. That is the most important thing that you can do heading into summer is get ready with a good solid watering plan. And then of course, pray for rain. So there you go, y'all. Those are some tips on getting prepared for the summer, the coming summer heat that's going to blast your lawn because while your lawn looks great in the spring, you definitely want to keep it looking that good all summer. And these tips will definitely help you do that. Now, as you guys have noticed, or many of you have noticed, I've been ending every video with a sunset. I'm going to continue doing that all year long. It's been one of my resolutions for this year that I want to see more beautiful sunsets. Seeing the sunset, it just kind of sets me right. It's that waterfront therapy. It just, I don't know, it's just one of those things and I love to share them with you and put in some good, you know, uplifting music along with them. So here is a recent sunset from Cinco de Mayo.